Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our Coast to Coast Reiki chat. It's been a while since we've done this. I know. I think since the holidays. <laughs> yeah, wow. So a couple of months. A couple of months. <laughs> Uh, so Patty Andrusak from Inner Peace Reiki in New York and I, uh, Brandy, in Los Angeles do this show. Um, we try to do it more often than once every two months. So we're, you know, we're, we're going to try to amp that up a little bit more, I suppose, moving forward. But yeah, yeah. yeah. travel, right? Right, right. So we'll, we'll call ourselves back in the groove now. Yeah. So a great way to kick off the year. We're really excited, actually, to have Laura Thomas joining us. Laura wears um, many hats uh, that have to do with animals. And so we kind of needed to narrow down our conversation tonight to one of them. And we're hoping to actually have her come back to talk more about some other things. But tonight, we are going to, going to dig into her business it's called the go-to girls pet pet and farm sitting business right services yeah services okay go-to girls pet and farm sitting services and laura lives in south carolina where she does all of this amazingly fun sounding work <laughs> it sounds like it's pretty hard but it also sounds like it's really fun um and so patty and i are, were actually we asked laura to come on and we're really excited to chat with her because we met her in reiki training a year ago at least i met you a year ago laura um it in uh Okay, so we all met at the same time. Yeah. 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 Okay, so a year ago, we met in uh, Kathleen Prasad's Let Animals Lead uh, teacher training down in Florida mm -hmm. at the CARE Foundation, and uh, we just had so much fun and such a special experience, you know, with that, and then since then, practicing that method, and, and talking with Laura, it just sounds like she does so many fun, exciting things that we thought it would be really cool to bring her on the show. So, welcome, Laura. We're excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So let's start uh, with just grounding us a little bit in what it is that you do. So the Gosu Girls Pet and Farm Sitting Services, what does that entail on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I have a business partner, Tricky Sullivan, and we have roughly 150 clients, give or take a few, mostly um, horse farms, hobby farms, you know, small, small farms, no large scale farms dogs and cats, um, all kinds of animals, all the way from fish, frogs to cows, and everything in between. We don't do spiders, neither one of us do spiders, <laughs> but thankfully we haven't been asked to do that. Um, but what we do is when people are out of town or sick or for some reason need a break or whatever, we will go in and take care of their animals for them. Um, we also do midday dog walks, potty break, that sort of thing for dogs. Um, and so what it entails is we're up super early in the morning, usually between four and five, get our animals fed, um, and then we're out the door on our round. And on a easy day, we may have one or two farms or households to take care of. On our busiest, we may go anywhere from five to six apiece morning. Wow. Some of those will have midday and then we'll have them again evenings. Um, and we go in and in the case of a dog, we're obviously feeding them, giving them any medication, checking water, cleaning up any messes, walking them, playing with them, you know, spending time with them to try to keep them comfortable when their family's away. Um, same thing with kitties, taking care of them. And then with the horses, we're usually feeding, turning them in or out of their stalls, cleaning stalls, doing all the barn chores, um, and with farm animals, whatever care they need. Um, as well as things like watering plants, bringing in mail, anything, you know, the client needs while they are away. So that's what wow. we do. Wow. Wow. So, how did you get interested in all of this? Because I know when, when we met, we were talking about, we were both kind of corporate America at the time. And um, um, yeah, how did you get interested in animals and taking care of them? Okay. Um, I've always loved animals. You know, I was the kid who was always bringing home the stray or the injured animal or, look, mom, I got another pet. Right. <laughs> um, 
And I started riding at a very early age. My family had not my immediate family, but my uncle had horses and started riding at a very young age. Loved horses, have always had them, um, have a special connection to them. But, you know, did the thing we all do. I went to college, got a real job, spent, I don't know, 25 plus years in the business world. And Trixie and I had talked for several years about wanting to have a pet feeding business because we both have farms and we could never go anywhere because there was nobody to take care of our animals. You know, you might can find someone right. to feed your dog or cat, but not your horse or your cow or, you know, those right. sorts of yeah. things. Um, and we talked about it for several years and I called her one day driving home from work and I had a really bad day. It turns <laughs> out she had two and we said, we're going to do that. So the next day we both turned in our notices. Wow. That was about seven years ago, almost seven years ago now, we started the business. So. Wow. That's awesome. That's so, you know, I think that's the way you have to do it though. It's like both yeah. feet in, you know, cause when you have one yeah. foot in one place, one foot in the other, sometimes right. they stay that way, you know? Yeah. You know, and we had done our research and talked about it and that sort of stuff. And we're just, you know, dragging our feet. Cause it's kind of scary to go from a paycheck to not knowing. Um, yeah. But it's, it's been great. Nothing about you. So you always had a, so you had, somewhat of an understanding on how to take care of horses and cows and, mm -hmm. and pigs and, and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering where that came from. Like, how do yeah, you know how just, to take care of all these different kinds of animals? Yeah, just always had them. Yeah. Wow. That you know, so I'm fascinated by the number of people who travel and leave someone to sit their farm. And, and you know, what's funny is it makes complete sense. It just never occurred to me before. Yeah. I do like how, how large of a um, radius do you cover? Um, we're in a pretty rural area in South Carolina and we live, I guess we live about 15 miles apart. So we have about a 10 mile radius around each okay. of us. Okay. Um, I don't know what that translates to between the two of us, but um, yeah. Yeah, which is really not, yeah. yeah, you know, it's funny because it's, it's spread out, but it's, it's amazing still that there's that much, you know, yeah. going on in that area. That's and when, I say we, and when I say we have 150 clients, that's not continuous. You know, they may travel uh -huh. once a year, they may travel every other weekend. Um, uh -huh. We have some that go out of town every weekend, every other weekend. Others we may sit for once or twice a year. You know, it just varies. Yeah. It's so, it's so interesting. And do you know if, um, if this is a common business around the U S or it, it is. is actually, yeah. And I, I think at one point, a couple of years ago, I read it was one of the fastest growing small businesses. Oh, how funny. I guess that makes sense. I guess, I guess yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So many yeah. people have animals. Did you hear it? Yeah. yeah, and even from visiting like the farm sanctuaries and that, the one thing, the most common thing you hear is, you know, if you want to, because a lot of people think about they'd love to have a sanctuary, start a sanctuary, and you hear everyone yeah. say, well, you're never going to be able to go on vacation again. That's right. You know, that's, that's right. like yeah. one of the most common things you hear, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, I think a lot of the pet sitting businesses are just dog, cat, small animal. I think we're a little unique um, or maybe the minority in the business because we do take care of farms. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So I, where, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, is that where, um, what came first, like the farm sitting business or Reiki? Like how did you, how did Reiki end up getting incorporated into this pet and farm sitting service? Um, the farm sitting came first and shortly after, actually just mm, maybe six months after we started the business, Trixie took a Reiki level one class. And a couple months later, my horse had colic surgery and was just kind of bonkers during the rehab at stall rest, not fun. Um, and Trixie shared Reiki with her and also with me um, and some of my other animals. And I was just amazed mm. at the results, you know, how much it calmed them, relieved the stress. Right. You know, the mare was just much calmer, happier. And of course, it made me feel wonderful. So, right. Yeah. I've got to do this. So, as soon as it was possible, I. Um, my level one and level two classes. And then both of us 
trained for the Reiki master level. Mm -hmm. Like most of us, I think. And it was mostly geared towards the hands on human practice. Mm -hmm. And I started reading. I'm a big reader. I like to read everything I can find on a subject. I started reading and ran across Kathleen and the Let Animals Lead approach. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this is it. This is it. Um, so started taking her classes and ended up at teacher training. It was a few years yeah. in between, um, but ended up at teacher training and here we all are. Yeah, yeah. I never realized because I didn't know that much about horses until I started, you know, volunteering a little bit at the sanctuaries. And yeah. I didn't, you know, when you hear a colic with babies, you just think, oh, they're gassy. Right. You know, yeah. right? Like it's not a big thing. Yeah. But horses, it's very serious. So yes. I yes. would imagine the surgery was too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, About three months of stall rest mm. after oh, wow. so, Yeah. But yeah, yeah and you know, after we realized the benefits it had on our own animals, it was like, well, you know, it yeah. seemed like a perfect marriage there. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, and with the lead animals lead method too, because it's hands off, it's such right. a different way to do it. Works really well with the farm animals because some of them you can't get in with. And yeah, and with the dogs and cats, you know, even if they appear happy, they're stressed on some level because their family's gone. And right. You know, if we can go in and we're balanced and peaceful and calm because of our own Reiki practice, mm -hmm. it helps them accept us a little better as their caregivers. It also, you know, we can just, while we're spending time with them, create that Reiki space mm -hmm. to help them even more, you know. Yeah. 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 That's so great. Yeah. You know, um, did you want to add anything, Brandy? Yeah, I, well, I was just curious if, um, so you saw it, you know, in the beginning with your own horse and you brought it into your practice. Have you seen any, any, do you have any more stories? Like, have you seen yeah. anything else uh, happen with some of your clients' animals that yeah. are notable? Yeah. One little dog always comes to mind when I think about this. She was a recent rescue from a shelter and I think family had had her a couple months and had some issues with her, but they were going away on vacation for a week. So Trixie and I went up ahead of time and met the little dog, sat with her, with her mom there, of course, and everything seemed to be fine. We figured she would be a little apprehensive, um, but thought we'd be okay. So the family leaves and the little dog's in a crate because she was still being crate trained. And I get there and open the crate door and there's this monster in the crate. <laughs> <laughs> growling, snarling, I will eat you. Um, do not get close to me. <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I sat down and talked to her, and it was evident this was not happening today. So I took her in the bathroom where I could just open the crate door and sit away from her. And if she got out, she wouldn't escape into the house, and I'd never see her again for the week. Um, so I did that and I sat down and started sharing Reiki with her and slowly the I will eat you barks and growls became just kind of little occasional rumbles, you know. So with her person's permission, I just left her food and water in the bathroom for that evening, you know, for that night and left the crate door open. And the next morning I went back and she was out of her crate, but as soon as she saw me, she actually jumped into the to the bathroom <laughs> and Aww. looked behind the shower curtain was like <laughs> you know, I was like oh my gosh so I just sat down again and meditated created that Reiki space you know sent her calm soothing thoughts and she did settle but it was very obvious I was not getting anywhere near her so I once again talked to her person and she said we were in the bathroom if you don't mind cleaning up the messes, she can, you know, let's not stress her, which was fine with me. So went on for three or four days. And finally, I think it was around the fourth or the fifth day, she would finally let me loop the, you know, the leash over her neck. Wow. And we could go out and walk. But the whole time she's going, you know, like, <laughs> not touch me. <laughs> um, by the end of the week, she'd gotten a little bit better. Um, I kept sharing the Reiki with her and then 
I think they went out of town a couple times after that, you know, several weeks apart, a couple months apart. And every time we would just go through that, and now she's my best friend. Now to the point she's loose in the house. I open the door and call her. She comes running, you know, has to jump yes. up in my arms. And it's just like, um, I but I think without the Reiki, I would have never gotten to that point with her. Um, right. You know, yeah. uh, especially only coming in periodically and not being part of her household. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I think she's oh, yeah, she's, she yeah. was fairly new and then they left to figure what yeah. the heck is going through her mind. Here's another stranger. I don't want to go yeah. back to that place, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think she's not very fond of um, strangers now still. But yeah. that, and then we've had a couple unfortunate incidents where an older dog or cat has started transitioning when their families are out of town. Mm-hmm. And Reiki's just so wonderful there to, um, that's so difficult. To sit, yeah, to sit with them and to share Reiki for comfort, you know, a peaceful crossing, that sort of thing. And share Reiki with the family mm-hmm. because, you know, because of the grief, the guilt over not oh, being Oh, sure, there. yeah. Yeah. So just amazing there. And I think in general, Reiki helps keep us more balanced. So when we do have to deal with the animals, we're kind of that source of calmness mm-hmm. for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in instances where they're sick or injured, we're kind of the strength there. Because we're dealing with not only the sick or injured animals, but their families who are away and just in a panic because this is happening and they're not at home. Right. Um, yeah, so, that's so strong. I can't even imagine that. I, and, yeah. And, you know, yeah. and Brandy and I have talked before about this. Were you able to, Brandy and I have mentioned before in other um, podcasts and in conversations that it was really difficult for us to be able to go into shelters, you know, into rescues, knowing the background of the animals, almost afraid to see what we might see because of these terrible situations. Do you find that Reiki really helped you? Um, go into these places with, you know, an understanding of being that light of seeing the animal in its purest form and not, yeah, yeah you know, sure. the situation it came from. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I could do it without my right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that often too, that it, I feel like the, um, the let animals lead practice gives us something to turn to when things are sometimes overwhelmingly difficult you know it's um yes. like the situation with the little dog and i can just imagine the emotion of okay this is my job i have to make sure this dog gets fed <laughs> like you yeah. know like, yeah. just feel exactly. it yeah. and and it's it gives you something to do and and it's yeah. so um non-confrontational it's so pure it's so grounded that it really gives you a place to turn in those difficult times to just yeah okay I there's like this little tiny bit I have control of is like right. pulling myself together right now <laughs> yeah, and, right. You, know, just, yeah. you know you just stop and go mm. okay. you right know, yeah all minutes, is well. <laughs> yes all is well exactly yeah. yeah and I mean even in the simpler situations where we've had horrible weather all winter just rain almost every day it seems and at some of our farms the horses have not been able to go out much because of the mud and that sort of thing so they're stuck inside in their stalls and they're stir crazy you know they're they're just like and so I will go into a barn and obviously you know I'm being paid to go in and do these things in a certain time frame I can't sit down and meditate but a lot of times what I do is kind of what I call a working meditation you know, I'll either chant while I'm doing the chores or um, practice one of the breathing techniques, that sort of thing. And it's really cool to see how the barn will just settle. Mm-hmm. You know, for just yeah. a little while, the animals seem to find a little bit of calmness from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is just so cool. I think the horses too, I've noticed. I haven't had a chance to work with too many other farm animals, but I work more with the horses and they love chanting. <laughs> yes, they do. And I don't have a good singing voice. So that always surprises <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. I don't either. <laughs> they I have to it. laugh because one day somebody's going to come to the barn and go, what is she doing? <laughs> But they know. <laughs> they will know after this. <laughs> I, I know that you um, also 
uh, have an interest in animal communication, and that's also a part of your business. Would you like to share a little bit about how that fits in and the difference between that and animal Reiki? Yeah, um, the animal communication is totally separate from the pet and farm fitting and from the animal Reiki practice. Um, animal communication and animal Reiki are different because with the communication, it's kind of a two-way exchange. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, with the animal Reiki, as you know, we just create that meditative space, that space of compassion and healing, and the animal participates, you know, as much or as little as they like. So they are very separate. Um, animal Reiki is a little more passive, animal communication a little more active. Um, mm -hmm. I use the animal Reiki in my pet sitting because it's non-invasive, it can do no harm. You know, it's simply sharing the good energy, you know, at right. the simplest level. Um, I don't, unless I have permission from the animal's person or they have requested it, I don't use animal communication in the pet sitting business at all. Um, mm -hmm. if by some chance something slips in and I hear something from an animal, which most of the time, because of what I do, it's I'm hungry, <laughs> or I'm cold, <laughs> I just, you know, I just acknowledge it and let it go. Um, right. I don't engage in any sort of exchange or conversation with them because I feel like I need to have the, per you know, their person's permission before I do that. It's just right. part of my ethics around that. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Yeah. So do you find that uh, pet owners um, ask you questions that they would like to ask their animal? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Instead of just, you know, I, I, a lot of times I think intuitively we know what our animals want, right? Right, and, right. Yeah, but, uh, some, they will ask for advice sometimes because we're in the, you know, sometimes a fresh set of eyes will see things. Yeah. That we didn't see seeing them every day. So yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they'll say, did you notice anything with, you know, this horse yeah. or my dog or cat, that sort of thing. Or what do you think about, um, right. You know, we have several older dogs right now that we take care of on a regular basis and their owners are always like, please tell me if you think, you know, mm -hmm. I need to do something different or if they need anything else, that sort of thing. So all the animals become our family. Um, right. You know, as a matter of fact, if we haven't heard from somebody in a while, we'll come, hey, how's so in, you know, yeah, how's yeah. this dog or that dog or, you know, how the horses, you know, just to, right. just to touch base because they, they are like family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it does. Well, you know, I was just thinking, so if someone's listening to this and they're thinking, wow, like she lives the life, <laughs> like <laughs> this is the dream, you know, I want to start a pet sitting, farm sitting business. What would you say to that person? Think long and hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work. I always tell people, Think about the fact that you're up really early in the morning. Sometimes you have late evenings. You work every weekend and every holiday. Mm -hmm. You know, you pretty much work when everybody else is off having fun. Um, right. The flip side of that is I have a lot of time during the day, during the week when I have free time. Um, so it's not like I'm working 24 seven. It's just, you know, there are a lot of things I would like to do on the weekends. Sometimes, but nope, I'm working. You know, that's what yeah. It's um, yeah. but it's well worth it because I, I really am living my dream life, you know, mm -hmm. working with animals. So. Yeah, it yeah. does. I, I, it sounds like a lot of work, but it sounds like very rewarding. It is. You yes. know, and a lot of fun because who doesn't want to be around animals all the time? I know. I know. You know? Is there uh, one simple idea you can share with our listeners that they could do to connect with an animal? you know, um, if they don't necessarily are trained in Reiki or? I think one of the biggest things is to just realize that animals are sentient beings and that they have feelings and emotions, spiritual needs, mental needs, um, and just realizing that we're all connected. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, even if you're not trained in Reiki, open your heart to the animals mm -hmm. and just listen with your heart. You know, they have so much to give us and so much to teach us. And if we would just listen to them and learn from them, we can all learn to be so much more kind and compassionate. Mm -hmm. 
Um, oh, I but, love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. so true. Yeah. It is true. And I love, I love the simplicity of that. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. If you stop and you take the time just to listen, you know, yeah. or, or make that tiny little interaction or, you know, connect the eyes, say hi with the dog coming down the street with its person, right. you know, like those little things. I love the simplicity of that. And I do yeah. think it goes a long way in building that compassion for sure. Um, you know, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, Laura, um, what's your favorite way for people to contact you? Um, you can email me at three, the number three, Laura Thomas at gmail.com, or I'm on Facebook, Three Cedars Reiki and Animal Communication. My website is threecedarsreiki.com. And I guess we'll put up all of those links yes. with the recording. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. But if anybody's interested in getting into the pet sitting, I'm happy to share my experience how we got started, um, the pitfalls, the things you need to think about, all of those things as well. Um, and of course, we're all good re resources for the Reiki part of it. Right, the yeah. Reiki part of it, yeah. Um, as well as Kathleen's website, Animal Reiki Source. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank yeah, you for joining us. Thank you, us. Thank you for sharing. It. Yeah. It's so much fun. It's been a lot of fun and it's just so much, yeah. so you have so many interesting things to share. It's really, <laughs> it's really, really fun to, to listen and learn. So yeah, I, could, um, I could, I could share the pet sitting stories for days. <laughs> I know. It's so great <laughs> so too that the way we all connected and I've stayed in touch, yes. you know, and because it's, you know, it's nice to be able to share these stories and feelings and things we think we hear from animals and yeah. we get it. <laughs> yeah. you know, yes. So that's yes. really, really great. Thank you so much yeah. for coming Thank on. You. Yes. Appreciate yes. It. All right. So shall we say good night? <laughs> so yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good night, ladies. Good night. Bye. Bye.